Hello and good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are, because we're really excited. We, we got more than 50 people who signed up from over 10 countries, um, all people interested in intuitive marketing. So I was all, whoa, this is exciting because I'm working on with, uh, with intuitive marketing for almost 10 years now. And um, it's good to see that the, yeah, the idea is spreading and more people are interested in it. So welcome, welcome to this webinar, this webinar about intuitive marketing. Um, just some practicalities. You will see me looking to the right or maybe your left, that's where the chat is. So whenever you feel like asking something, you can, you can raise your hand, I think, but it's not working. So try to chat and then you'll, um, I'll, I'll look at the chat every now and then and uh, yeah, I, I will answer your questions. And I hope Ken will also join in the chat, so he will be there to uh, to answer questions. Yeah, Arian says Ken needs another browser. Well, thanks for all the help, but we have tried everything. He has shut down everything, and we were connected, and then he was disconnected. So maybe it's a message from our subconscious, intuitive brains, whatever. So. Um, Let's start with an introduction. Um, this is where I live in the Netherlands, Deventer. It's the city on the IJssel River. And actually it used to be a very big city back, I don't know, in the 1600s or so. Um, but now it's a small 100,000 inhabitants. Um, it's in the east of Holland. And then I would like to introduce Ken, but Ken is not here. So Ken, lives in San, San Rafael in California, USA. Um, and the interesting thing is that he lives right close to my brother. So it was, I met Ken in Bulgaria. It was very interesting how we met, but that's a different story. It's very intuitive. Um, yeah, he has a big house. That's right. No, this is not his house. Um, but he lives close to my brother, so we, I said, well, I want to visit my brother brother again. Shall we organize something in the United States? And so we are planning a workshop, the Intuitive Marketeer, the 23rd of May in Oakland, the city where my brother lives. So, um, and then we said, oh, why don't we organize a webinar for, for people from all over the world that are interested in into intuition and marketing and business? So... That's um, what we do. I'm looking at the chat. Okay. <laughs> the cyber gnomes and gnomes are playing. Yeah, that's what they do. Um, so what Ken was is going to tell you about is about three centers of intelligence. And well, we all know about the executive function. I'm trying to do this. I'm not as good as Ken is, but I'm also working with this, but from a little different perspective. So for me, if I look at intuitive marketing, marketing is about you have a company and you want clients. It's very, actually, it's very basic. Um, and well, what I've, I've visualized here is that there's a, a large part, or yeah, we think there's a large part above the sea level. Um, where companies and clients talk. There's a lot of conscious com communication with images, with body language, with websites, with flyers, all kinds of things like this. And this is where the regular marketing focuses on. It's about, okay, so how do you get your, your things across? How do you shake hands? How do you smile? How do you uh, use your body posture to to, to bring things across to, um, and, and that works. But for me, and that's why I like the, the image of the icebergs, which are used very often, but there's so much more underwater. Um, and that's where there's also a lot of communication between clients and companies. Um, but that's communication that's more subconscious. And I don't, well, I, would, I don't like to say unconscious because it's more like you're unconscious and then you're almost dead. It's, it's subconscious. So it's, it's there and, and it's, it's influencing us. And yeah, it's more energetic. It's more, yeah, I say non-local and timeless. 
information. Um, and I talked to Ken about this picture and he said, well, you should make the company larger, like to the going to the bottom, because it's also in the, in the subconscious world. There's also the company and the client. And that's true. But at a certain point, we it's not sure anymore if, if where the boundaries are. So maybe the client and the company are, are just one. Maybe these two icebergs uh, underwater, they are, they are one. And that's what I like about intuition, about this subconscious layer in the world, is that it is uh, connecting everything. And if you can tap into that, and that's where the intuition comes, because with intuition, we tap into this subconsciousness, this subconscious information, this energy. And then there is not a very clear distinction between me and you, between today and tomorrow, between me and my client, between my company and another body's company. So it's a more, yeah, it's an interesting world to, to tap into. And I've written also that the company is always made of human beings, at least one, if you're, 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 if you're an independent consultant, for example. And also clients, they're just like human beings, so don't worry about that. And every human being has intuition. Every human being is connected to this level, this subconscious levels, this intuitive layer in the world. And so using your intuition, you can tap into this information stream, actually. You can... Um, you can find out what your client likes e even without y you knowing the client yet. So that's why I like this intuitive marketing because we're going to use uh, different methods and different uh, sources of information. And these sources of, of information will give us so much more information and clearer information that we can use to get more clients and not getting more clients because we want to make money. No, getting more clients because we have something that the clients also want. So the clients are gonna be happier as well. And you will attract clients that are, yeah, that are your clients and that, that, that are really, um, yeah, they suit you and, and you suit them. So it's it's a win, win, win because it will make the world better. That's That's my, yeah, that's my vision and that's my belief as well. So this is what I, this is my mental picture, mental model, actually, of, of intuitive marketing. Um, yeah, and then we are gonna talk about intuition. And with intuition, it's always interesting because intuition uh, is very quiet. And intuition talks to us or whispers to us in different ways. And, um, yeah, now I have to think a little bit. Let's open the... Because the next exercise was an exercise that um, Ken was going to do. But I think I, I, I will do my exercise that's a little bit similar. Because when you're using intuition and you want to use more intuition and do it for your business, using intuition for your business, your marketing, your body is a very important part to use and not only your head. So what I would like to do with you is an exercise to, yeah, to feel your body again and to also sense what information is my body providing me. And it might even provide you with some information about how to get more clients. Let's find out. So what you can do is, yeah, make yourself comfortable. Let's get this picture, yeah. So make yourself comfortable and close your eyes. And the thing is, you might have had a very busy day or a busy night, or my words have put your brains into action. And right now, it's the moment to relax again, to tell your thoughts that, well, it's okay to let go for a while. And you focus on your breathing. Focus on the breathing of your body. And it's always interesting to find out where do I sense my breathing? If I inhale, where does my body get bigger? 
And when you exhale, where do you sense the exhalation? When you have a thought, it's perfectly okay. Just say hello, thought. But you don't have to go along with the thought. It's like a train. The train arrives at the train station and you say, hey, hello, train. And then the train leaves again. And you don't step into the train, but you stay on the platform. And you focus on your breathing again. And with every exhalation, you let go some tension. And you let go of ideas you have, things you have to do. For now, it's perfectly okay. For the next 10 minutes, you don't have to do anything. So then you focus on your breathing again. And then you focus on your feet. Feel your feet on the ground. Maybe even move your feet a little bit. Do you feel socks if you're wearing socks or your shoes or do you feel the floor? Focus all your attention to your feet. Sometimes your feet might even react. You might get a little tickling in your feet or they get a little warmer or colder. And I always like to connect my feet with the, with the earth, with the core of the earth by visualizing roots of a tree going all the way to the center of the earth or if you can sense that your feet are getting heavier and heavier and go all the way into the earth and then you move your attention up a little bit your calves your legs, your knees. You might even put some tension in the muscles and then release the tension again. And every exhale, you use your breathing. So you exhale and you let go of some more tension that was in the, in the muscles. And then you sense your belly, your pelvis, you feel your bottom, which is stuck to the chair. And you also put some tension in the muscles there, and let go again. And I also, always, also already start to yawn. So if you yawn, that's perfectly okay. Yawning is letting go of tension. And then you move your attention to your belly and the lower back. And maybe you can feel the breathing there. And if you sense any tension, that's okay. Just leave the tension as it is. Just say hello to the tension. And you keep on breathing. And when you exhale, you let go some of the tension. And then you move your attention to your upper body your chest, the shoulder blades, your shoulders. So maybe you want to move your shoulders and loosen them up. Maybe make little circles or big circles with your shoulders. And 
then when you stop moving you sense again what do you sense in your body from your bottom from your feet up to your chest until now just be aware just be conscious of what you sense then you sense your neck your neck muscles you might want to move your head And then you can make all kinds of silly faces so all the small little tiny muscles in your face will contract and you can let go of the tension again and then you can connect your crown the top of your head with the center of the universe So feel a connection, you can visualize a thread or a light going from your head all the way to the center of the universe. Or maybe the other way around, from the center of the universe to your head. Okay, and now sense your body sense what you sense in your body and maybe there's some tension that's okay maybe there are thoughts that's okay but what you do is you focus your attention to this quiet place inside of you so where do you feel silence where do you sense quietness You put all your attention there. And then you ask yourself a question. For example, how do I get more clients? Or how to approach this specific client? So ask yourself a question. Focused inside yourself. And just be, be curious how you get the answer. Maybe you get a flash of thoughts. Maybe you get an image, maybe some sensation or a feeling. And then you just say thank you. And maybe it's very clear, maybe it's not clear at all. Just say thank you. Another question you might want to ask is, what would it take? What would it take to get more clients? Or what would it take to raise my income? What would it take to be happier? Still focused on this quiet, still place inside of you. What would it take? maybe your body is also telling you information maybe you sense this little tickling or maybe a contraction somewhere or maybe some ache even and everything is information and if you want to use that information don't judge just say okay my back is aching when i ask this question so what is this aching of my back wanting to tell me and then you can focus your attention on this aching and say okay aching what is what is the message and maybe there's a sensation in the aching. Maybe there's a sound in the aching. Maybe there's an image. Okay, for now we're going to end this exercise. And you can do this ever, whenever you want. So thank your body for the information and stretch a little bit and open your eyes. And if you want to share something in the chat, you can.
So that's the intelligence of your body and also the body as a vehicle or an entrance point to your intuition. I saw that there was a question, who is this presenter? Well, for the people that came in later, I would say, hi, my name is Martijn Meima and I, I wanted to be to present this webinar together with Ken Homer, but yeah, he, there was some technical technical problems why he couldn't make it. So that's too bad. Um, Mila says, thank you, you're welcome. Okay, so let's continue because if we talk about intuitive marketing, it's about intuition and marketing. Well, marketing we know a lot about, but what is intuition? Um, for me, it's more than a gut feeling. Intuition is also about, is for me, it has six flavors. I call it six flavors. Um, and it's seeing information. You can see images. So that's what I, in the, in the meditation, I also ask you to, maybe you see something. Maybe you, you feel something. It's, it's the feeling. And that's what we mostly use. We use this gut feeling as for for intuition but intuition is much more than than a gut feeling actually it is not a gut feeling but i'll come to that later it's also about knowing and knowing is interesting because that's also thinking and knowing could be mixed up but knowing is like well also <laughs> i'll come to that later because it is about clear you can put clear in front of all these words then you have hearing, so that it's like words, you hear words, you hear, hear sounds, and even smelling and tasting. Um, so let's see if we continue, because then you have, you can put the words clear seeing, clear feeling, clear knowing, and that's what it, what is the distinction between your gut feeling and clear feeling. Your gut feeling is all mixed up with anxieties, with desires, with, um, things that happened in the past and, and all that, that stuff. And it's really actually a lot, a big mess sometimes in, in, in your gut feeling. And a clear feeling is a feeling, it's, it's an intuitive feeling. And the same goes for knowing. You can think a lot and it's a lot of thinking and everything is going on in your head. But the clear knowing is also very light and very clear. Um, but you also have clear seeing where you have these images, which are is something different than seeing the real world. It's seeing this intuitive information or hearing intuitive information and even smelling and tasting. Well, most people have two of these channels or flavors that are their favorite and, and most um, developed. So find for yourself which ones of, of these are, are, are your favorite. And for me, it's interesting because I'm not a very clear feeling person. I, I can see a lot and I know a lot. So when people say feel, and uh, I thought, oh, well, I don't feel anything, but I saw a lot and I knew a lot. So I think it's very interesting to know for people that want to use their intuition to that there are more, more flavors than just the feeling. Yeah, and then the interesting thing is, of course, that in, the, in, in English, there you get they use the French words, and then you get clairvoyance, clairsentience, claircognizance, clairaudience, clair clairofactus, and clairgustance. I have to, have to look these up because I don't know them all. And um, and it's not psychic if you have these these intuitive senses, intuitive channels. It's everybody has them, and the only thing is that in school we didn't develop them. We learned how to speak English or Bulgarian or French or Dutch or whatever language, German. Um, but we didn't learn how to speak intuition or how to listen to our intuition. Um, but it's a very natural, uh, yeah, it's very natural to use your intuition to have intuition. So, um, yeah, I want to invite you to find your, your way of communicating with your intuition or your the way your intuition is communicating with you and to to start start exploring it. Um, so where can you use the intuition in your business because well you can use intuition and a lot of people use intuition in their daily life with their friends or with 
when you want to find a new house or a new job or um yeah when you meet people you can, and, and when you're in places you can sense how oh, this is a good good place to be or hey there's something wrong with this person or my friend is not feeling well or um or maybe you or it also can also sense when somebody wants to call you you think oh i have to think of you and then ring there's a the telephone so that's all intuitive information and try to use these these different channels and see what's happened oh, what what do i feel and what do i see or is there a smell or can i also um, um taste something or or if there is something i know what would it be and you can use it in business as well you can use it in marketing well that's what it, where what where the, what this webinar is about and then the acquisition i think for me it's very close together but how to how to 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 make deals you can use your intuition to find out so what words can i use here or um what is the what are the key points that my potential client likes and i can and i, I need to tell more about or what are points or things that i shouldn't talk about you can use it all, all kinds of meetings sales me meetings for acquisition but also uh, meetings with your um, team members or meetings with your colleagues or meetings with people you cooperate with. So cooperation is also a very good way of using your intuition. You might even use each other's intuition. So instead of saying, um, so how are you with the deadlines? And what is your KPI for today? And how, how, did you, you, how did you score on the KPIs? You can also say, what did your intuition tell you today? And we have to, we're, we have to deal with these problems. So let's close our eyes and let's focus on our intuition. And what does our intuition tell us about this problem? And then you share your, your intuition and then maybe there's more information coming from this um, yeah, collective intelligence and it, it almost is. So there's, there, 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 yeah, it's a very good way to, or it's a very, um, it's very interesting to also use it for cooperation and in groups. Time management. I even have a training called intuitive time management, which is very interesting to use it to, to know what to do when and to know what to put your focus on which, when you are uh, doing your task during the day. Coaching and, and also consulting can also be, you be, you can also use a lot of intuition in that. Making choices, actually, I think a lot of people use their intuition to make choices, but they try to find to, to try to make up a story that makes it a little bit logical. But if you really look down to the core of the decision, it's made by intuition. And personal growth. It's also you can use your intuition to find out. Okay, so this is still something that I need to work on, or what is my next step in my personal growth? So there's a lot of areas that you can use your intuition, and um, yeah, today, or tonight, I, or talk, no, this morning, for, I would like to talk about the marketing part. Um, because in marketing, no, first, methodologies, because you can use your intuition, but you, there are also very many uh, intuitive methods, and it makes it a lot easier to use your intuition. Because if you just use your intuition, um, yeah, it asks a lot of self-awareness, a lot of practice. And with these in, uh, intuitive uh, methods, you practice your intuition and at the same time you get a lot of results. And so one of the, of the methodologies you can use is constellations. And I don't know if people are familiar with constellations, um, but in the 1980s, Bert Hellinger in Germany had, to, had to developed a therapeutical method and it's called family constellations and family constellations have developed into business constellations and it's a very interesting development for me as a businessman because um, it, it gives the power of the constellations um, to the the area of business so what you do with the with the constellation is that you create a, a spatial visual um, 
map actually of the problem. So you ask somebody or people to represent elements from your, from your problem. For example, with marketing, you can ask somebody to represent your potential client or somebody to represent your uh, website even, or represent your service or product and somebody to represent your company. And, and how it works, people have done a lot of research and they don't know how it works, but they have found out that, that it works. Um, that these people, they start moving and they start giving information and it's very accurate. And actually it's very um, deep information. It's intuitive information about what is happening between you and your clients and your potential clients, between your potential clients and your website. And it gives information about how to position your website, how to position yourself, what is needed to make the next step in your in your marketing. So um, we're gonna do an exercise with that. So you get a little bit of a feeling because it's very difficult to talk about. Um, visualizations, that's what we, yeah, it's a little bit of what we did, but you can use visualizations even more that you ask your intuition for images and then you explore these images and um, you even ask your this image images questions and it gives a lot of information from this subconscious underwater world and that can help you to improve your marketing and to also to fine-tune your marketing to really hit the right buttons for your client so the what would it, what the what would it take question I've learned that from Michaela 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 well I forgot her name. Um, and she, 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 she wrote that it is, it's a uh, commonly available method, which is just asking yourself, what would it take? And then not thinking about it, but well, what we did first doing meditation or a little exercise to focus on your intuition, your body, and then ask, what would it take? And it's a very powerful method because this, what would it take? brings you in a state of possibilities, of ideas, of uh, next steps. I also ask myself, it's another way of doing this, is what's my next step? And what is my first next step? Because we tend to think in big plans and we need 20 steps and 20 deadlines and, and then we need to break them down into small steps and we have 500 steps and all kinds of Gantt charts. And actually the only thing you need to know is what is my next step? And it might be the next step for the next 10 minutes, or it might be a next step for the next week. Uh, but after 10 minutes, you can ask yourself again, what's my next step? So what would it take or what is my next step is a very easy methodology, actually. You can also use intuition cards, which are cards that you can, um, yeah, it's like a blind card deck and you, you draw one card and then you look at it and it gives you information. Um, I see a question. Does anybody know business constellation practitioners in the Bay Area? Uh, well, actually, the thing is, I'm coming to the Bay Area the 23rd of May, and we're going to do business constellations. So, Jana, that's very good. But I don't know any other, maybe some other people know. But I'm coming to the Bay Area. So another uh, methodology is the body awareness. That's the, what we did in the exercise is um, your body is a very good antenna actually of intuitive information, but it's also very well hurt and uh, distracted by things that have, have, have happened in the past. And so you need to do some personal development to, and some practice and some um, getting to know yourself in order to listen to your body carefully and to understand what your body is telling you. Um, but body awareness is very good in using your intuition. Um, then there are these release techniques. Um, so maybe it's not a very intuitive method, methodology, but it's more a methodology to get into, to get, to get uh, your, to develop your intuition, to get more, access to your intuition because by releasing pain, by releasing anxieties, there's more and more room for your intuition. And then you have meditation. You can do meditation uh, very 
well, how should I say it? It's very esoterically, like like lighting candles and then sitting for two two hours, and um, it it works. It works really well because it, meditation brings you in a state of mind that is is very um, supporting your intuition. Uh, for me, I am a very active person, and but there is also active meditations like a walking meditation or or very short meditations. I even, and I, I can show you that what, what I um, have practiced or I've done so many times when I want to do use my intuition, oops, I just turn my chair like this. I take a deep breath. And for me, that's my meditation. Um, and that's because I've meditated a lot in, in this chair in that position. And then when you do it often, more often then this this uh, chair brings back the energy of the meditation right away. So meditation can can be short, can be long, can be active, can be passive. It's just depending on your preference. Okay. Any questions? Yeah, Bruce says Ken has a lot of references. Yes, and I know that um, I think for the, the Society of Organizational Learning in the Bay Area has done some workshops also on, on uh, business constellation. So yeah, you can ask Ken. Mm, actually, I was thinking of telling you some insights I gained from 10 years of doing intuitive marketing, but I'd rather have you experience something yourself first. So let's do an exercise. And you will need some pieces of paper, I forgot to tell you. So you need three pieces of paper or three pens or three objects. Doesn't really matter actually. So take some time to grab pieces of paper and you need some space to put them. So yeah, at least a little bit that you can move them around. And this is an exercise to find out more about your marketing. So what does your marketing need and what do you need to get more clients? Because that was what this webinar was all about, how to get more clients with less effort. Because what happens if you use this intuitive information, it be, it's all more, uh, yeah, more related to your way of working and that way it makes it easier for you to do and it doesn't really feel like work anymore. So the first piece of paper you write on I or your name. Um, and if you have an object, you just say, okay, this is the object that represents me. And you put it somewhere in the room. And I put a little arrow there that means, okay, I'm looking upwards. And you can decide for yourself. This is just an example, so don't put them in the room and just like I put them on the screen. So there's this piece of paper that represents yourself. And another one that represents your potential client. So you position that as well and also make sure which way is it looking. If it were a person, what way would this, what direction would this person look? And then finally you put an, no, no, finally, it's this one. You put a piece of paper with the bridge. So the bridge between you and your potential client. You can also use marketing, but by using the bridge, it's more like a metaphorical energy. And it's more like, okay, if you look, use marketing, you might also already start thinking in all kinds of marketing directions, but the bridge is okay. So how do I connect with these potential clients? What is needed? for me or my company, but okay, I wanted, didn't want it to make it too big. So we use these three elements and you put them in the room. And you don't have to do it like this, but do whatever you want. Sense where, where does this paper wants to be? Maybe you can ask that question. Where does this paper wants to be? And what you can do is that you step on the piece of paper with I and you face in the direction that you put the paper. 
And then again, you can think a lot, but the interesting thing is if you use your body again. So what does your body tell you? What do your emotions tell you? What do you sense in your mental mind? And you can also sense how are you connected with the other elements? Are you more connected with the bridge or more connected with the potential clients? Are you connect not connected at all? And again, without judgment, just look at it. Just observe. Explore. It's exploration. And if you are connected or you feel a connection, what is this connection about? Is it is it bringing you joy or is it bring you anxiety or is it bring bring relaxation so what is the quality of the connection and then you step off this piece of paper you shake a little bit and then you step on the potential client so now you're representing your potential client. And you don't have to do anything. Just step on the piece of paper and sense what's happening to you. Don't try to understand it, but just sense. What do you sense in your body, in your mind? What do you sense in your emotions? And I would advise you to open up your eyes. Don't close your eyes. Maybe a little bit to, to focus inwards, but it's also about the interaction with the other elements. So your potential client, is it is he connected with the bridge or with your, your you, the representation of you, the piece of paper with I on it? How is your potential client feeling? Is he comfortable? Is he excited or is he, well, whatever? And maybe he wants to move. I don't know. Does, do you feel that you want to move here? He might already move the piece of paper. If you really feel like, oh, yeah, I need to take two steps back or one step forward or I need to turn around, just make the movement. And then again, sense from this new position. What do you sense here? Now you step off this piece of paper and also shake a little bit. Sometimes you need to really get out of this energy of this potential client. You turn around and you step on the bridge. So now you're going to sense what the bridge is like. What do you sense being the bridge? And sometimes you just get ideas about marketing. You get like, oh, I need to do this, which is perfectly okay. You don't, it's not a, it's not bad to think. So if you get ideas, write them down. It's a very good idea probably. And then you focus on also, okay, what is the quality of this bridge? What is this bridge doing here? What is the function of the bridge? Do I, am I needed here or is there no bridge needed? And then you also sense if this bridge wants to move. So maybe you feel like, oh, yeah, I need to move to another position. You might see the new position. You might sense it, feel it where you want to go. And you make them make the move. And you step off this piece of paper again. And I might go a little bit too fast, so you can do this later again. But I have to do this 
median sp speed of everyone in the in the webinar. So and you step on your own piece of paper again, the I. And you sense what has happened with you. How how are you reacting to what the other representatives are saying? Because you have heard you, you just repeat what you have said at the other positions and you say, Oh, how is that resonating in you? And maybe you want to move as well. So make the move you want to make. And what when you have more time, what you can do, you can step on on other pieces of paper again and yeah, keep on moving until you feel, ah, oh, this is this is a very good constellation, this is a very good position. Or you might even want to add on other elements like your product or service, your company, or maybe the client of the client, or a competitor, or the the higher purpose of your company. So there are different elements that you can add. It makes it a lot more complicated. Uh, but that's you can you can play with this because it's also playing. But make sure that every time you step on a piece of paper and step off, that you really step off and that you shake yourself and that you yeah, really get out of, out of the energy and always end on your own piece of paper, which, which brings you back into your own energy. And you also can find out, so how is it affecting you, all this information and all these uh, movements? So if you want to share something about this exercise, feel free. And if you don't want to share, feel free as well. And this is a, a taste of a constellation. Most of the time when I do constellations, I work with people representing these different elements. And then you can watch, yeah, the tableau vivant, they call it. In French, uh, you, you can really and you can really sense things that are happening. You can really sense that, oh, this is a lot better, or oh, there's a lot of tension, and and it also gives you a lot of knowledge about. Um, so what do, what do my clients need, and what do I need to get close to these clients or get more connected with with these clients? And then you can translate that into, okay, so on my website, I need to make more clear what my products are because my clients were really focused on my product. Or I need to be very open and, um, and vul vulnerable because that's what my, cli my clients liked about me and I need to have, talk more about myself maybe. Um, so that's very important that it is always, uh, there's no one size fits all. It depends on you, your client, your product, your services what your best way of marketing is. So this webinar is also not about me telling you what your best way of marketing is. It's telling me how you can find your best way to get more clients. Um, so this exercise you can do whenever you want. I see there's no questions, no. Okay, so what I would like to do now is share some of my insights. Well, you've already seen that it's all about connection. Um, so instead of making money or reaching goals or setting goals and, and, and targets, I would say focus on connection, connection with yourself. And that's what we did in the first exercise, connection with your product and your client, your, your, your services. Um, and also with your client. And I would like to invite you to experiment with that. Just visualize your client in front of you or, or in this exercise and really be honest to yourself. How, how are you connected and how well are you connected with your client or with your customer, or with your um, service or product? 
In the meantime, I see a question by Ignaz. I think it gave some view on how to approach potential client, clients. Maybe the realization that I need to make a make a bring in a way. So it also creates a space for some more players to join the business with the same customer. Okay. So you see that in just this small exercise, there's a lot of information. And this information, yeah, how I see it comes from this intuitive subconscious level. Um, and it's not on this list because, well, one of the things that I also think is very important is that there's so much more to the world than meets the eye. And I would really love more and more people using that information and not only work with with what they can see and and, and with a and, and, uh, sense with the five senses, because there's, there's, there are so much more information you can use. So find your own unique way. That's a very important thing that I've learned from all my clients and from myself is there are so many uh, gurus and uh, how to books um, that pretend that there is one way that brings you success and brings you golden mountains, as we say. Um, but it is your, your way. And even if you work with 500 people, it's also the unique way of the company. So there's a unique company way and there is a unique way for each of the 500 people or there are not 500 people working in marketing, I guess. But so, don't be seduced to do like some good people do that are very successful because it might not be your way. Yet another thing that I learned is not doing is marketing too. We always think that we have to present ourselves. We have to network. We have to go out. We have to uh, be present in social media and really show ourselves. And that's not true. Not for everyone. For some people it's true, but not for everyone. I know somebody says, some, some of, one of my clients, he said, well, what I learned from you is that I can just sit and whenever I need clients, I meditate and I visualize that more clients are coming to me and I connect with my clients. And then that afternoon, somebody calls. <laughs> and that's very interesting because that's the only marketing she does. She has a website and people can find her on the internet, but she doesn't do active internet marketing or other marketing. So, it's also about letting go. And that's what I like about this picture. It's letting go of ideas about marketing. Well, marketing should be like this, or marketing should be like that, or entrepreneurs or, or managers should do this, or no, let go of all these ideas. And these ideas are mostly put into your mind by, the, by, by society, by all these uh, self-help books and these, these marketing guru books, but also by culture and by your family. Um, but they are not always true. They might be true, but let go of the ideas and find your own way. And also let go of the, the need of, for control. We might we want to control the world and we want to be in control of what is happening with my company. And I've learned myself, but also seen with a lot of clients, you're not in control that anyway. And by trying to be in control, it takes a lot of energy. So if you want less, cl more clients with less effort, so stop controlling everything because that that costs a lot of effort, um, and it's not bringing you anything. So if you let go of control, it's more like surfing. Um, if you con if you surf on the waves, it's it's not controlling. It's a little bit controlling, but it's also surfing the tide. It's surfing the wave. So it's also um, going go with the flow. Yeah, and next insight is never about money. And that's an important one because people think that, well, oh, my, 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 my service is too expensive or when people start complaining and it's, it must be about the money or when you think something is too expensive or, but it's never about money. It is more about giving and taking. So if people start complaining, it might be that you give too little and take too much so that your product is not, uh, you know, or you, or they are not experiencing that, that you give enough and that giving or taking that might also be subconscious because I've seen in a, in a constellation or in a coaching that somebody, what did she say? It was 
something like, okay, she needs, like she, oh yeah, the, the client needed to make her feel very valuable. So it was not that she was giving something, but she was giving something so that she could feel valuable. And that doesn't, yeah, that makes sense, but it, it means that the client that is paying you with, with, with that, that value and not with money. And the other way around, it also works that if you, your, your service is, uh, the price is too low, that you also can get a lot of complaints that people say, oh, this is not working and, 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 oh yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm not happy. I'm not satisfied and it's not bringing what I thought it would bring, um, or, or it's too expensive. Even they would say it's too expensive, but it might be that it is too inexpensive. So whenever things are, it's something about money, you need to really realize yourself what is happening here. How is the giving and taking? Is it in balance or not? Um, and you need to realize that money is a very clear energy. It's very pure. And I know it's very difficult to say that in these days where there's a lot of money being used for bad things. And that's what people do. They stick things onto money and they um, attach things to, to, to the, this energy of money, which makes it either very beautiful or very ugly. So it's also good to make a distinction between what you or people attach to the flow of money and the real pure energy of money. Um, so that's also about marketing because one of the piece for marketing is, is uh, price. And price is a very interesting thing. Well, it goes too far for now, but you can also do an exercise with a constellation with price. And for me, what I've seen, and also for my clients, is the biggest steps in your marketing you make through personal development. So it's not building this beautiful website. It's more like letting go of all kinds of issues from the past or issues about money, issues about receiving, issues about am I worth it, issues about all kinds of things. And um, well, I'm a little biased, of course, because I'm working in this area and people come to me with all these questions. but. I would like to, I think I can say that almost everyone has some issues that, that, um, with money or with, uh, with that, that affect marketing. So let me see. So marketing and, and, and mark, mark, yeah, improving your marketing is not only about some factual things or theoretical marketing, um, issues or marketing tips and tricks. It is also about looking inside and finding out, so what is blocking me from getting more clients? What is what's inside me um, that is communicating in this, in this subconscious layer? Uh, oh, I don't want clients or it's very difficult if I get more clients or whoa, if I get too successful, I'm, 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 I don't know if I can handle it. I've seen that quite often that people say, I want more clients. And then in a constellation, it shows that, wow, they're they are almost scared of success, and scared of getting more clients. So that's what I would like to share with you. And um, I think if you're interested in, in intuitive marketing and you're in the Netherlands, the 16th of April, I have one spot left for intuitive marketing, but it just, sign up for the for the for the workshop because i if i have enough people i plan a new one and the 23rd of may i'm in bay area i'm very excited to see my brother again and his kids and also to do this workshop with ken because ken will also do parts of the workshop with the body and with uh, conversations and so it's very interesting to do this together with with ken um we will send you an email with more information about the workshop um, and a $50 discount for everyone watching this webinar or actually everyone in our networks, they get a $50 discount. So that's very interesting. Um, yeah, if you cannot make it the 23rd, then well, I'm not going to be, be there the next month or a month after that. So, um, and if you're in another country and say, oh, well, this intuitive marketing sounds good or intuitive business intuition workshop, then just send me an email and we can see if we can arrange something. I'm, I will be in Bulgaria sometimes or in Slovenia, so or Paris. The world is a small place anyway. 
Okay, hope you, you enjoyed it and have fun with your marketing.